I think every reptile hobbyist has that species they want to own one day, and I'm no different. So today, let's go over the top five bucket list reptiles that I one day must own. My name's Adam, this is Diamond, you're watching Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles, stick around. And as usual, let's start it off with number five, Argentine black and white tagus. I'll keep this one brief because if you've watched the channel, you know we talked about them two weeks ago and I talk about them all the time. A four foot lizard that can tame down to almost puppy dog type of personality in that they can tolerate you handling them and interact with them quite well. And they're big enough that they're impressive, but they're not gonna kill you either. So I think it's kind of like the perfect reptile for someone who's ready for a big reptile and uh, doesn't like getting torn apart by big reptiles. This is kind of like perfect for that. Argentine black and white specifically, although reds are awesome and all different types of tagus, I just feel these are the ones that I want. I can have a very hot humidity, definitely, hot humidity, high humidity, and tied to high temperatures. I have the enclosures for that and I have the space for that. And that was what was holding me back. I didn't have the space. I didn't have space in my home for an enclosure that is eight foot by four foot by three foot or something similar. And now I do. So are you gonna see one of my collection? Maybe you should hit subscribe because yeah, probably. Number four, and something I never talk about on the channel and I really should, frill dragons. I, okay, okay, so when I was a kid, the reason I got so obsessed with reptiles is because I was obsessed with dinosaurs and learned that you can't have them as pets, so I moved on to reptiles. And one of the quintessential reptile scenes or dinosaur scenes that every kid saw was in Jurassic Park when Newman got eaten by this thing that was never actually a real dinosaur that was kind of like ripped off from a frilled dragon. Yeah, so anyway, that was a long roundabout way to say I've been obsessed with these since I was about six. So I have always wanted one. I just feel like because they can get to three feet sometimes, the Australian ones, the New Guinea ones are a little bit smaller, two-ish feet, two and a half feet, something like that. And this is a perfect example. I wanna say thanks to my friend Chris at Niagara Exotics for letting me come in and shooting some B-roll of these awesome lizards. He's got one and normally it's kind of difficult to get them this handleable or not all of them get to be this handleable, I guess I should say. Where with this specimen here, Chris just pulled it out, showed it to me, no problem whatsoever. Now there are a few reasons why I don't have one yet. I feel like you almost need to build like a closet for them if you have a bigger one, or you can get something that's say four by four by two or something like that where you have height because they are an arboreal species, so they need more height for sure. And also because they grow two to three feet, you need some width to it as well and depth. So it's a much larger enclosure than most people would be able to find for a reasonable price or just easily accessible at all. And there's a few other things that require more time. And as this collection grows, maybe I can bring in a helper, you know, once a week or something, and it would really help with maintenance. And because of the collection size, I just don't want another animal at this time that takes a lot more effort than a lot of other animals. They are big, so they need that big enclosure, which is more cleaning, of course. And of course, they need a lot of food because they eat insects quite readily. Like, that's what they are. They're insectivores, right? But they need a lot more insects more regularly than some other species. Don't bite my ear, please. Please don't. And I think even Clint explained it in his video about them, they need a lot of insects. So it's one of those things, if you're not great at keeping insects alive, this guy and you need to go to the store every time, well, I mean, you gotta figure out a better solution. And also, I try to have all my animals handleable. I want the ability to handle all of my reptiles for videos and just in general when people come over to show them. I want to show animals and these reptiles as beautiful creatures that aren't monsters, and the best way to do that is to be able to hold them. And these guys take a little bit more work than some other animals and some other species similar uh, to tame out. So that's why I think they're amazing. You'll definitely see one in my collection one day, but not on this day. Okay, we can't do this whole list without bringing up a snake that I truly love and admire. Number three, Brazilian rainbow boas. Brazilian rainbow boas are maybe the most beautiful snake that isn't venomous in the world. Now I've said this about mandarin rat snakes and other species too, I just think it's so difficult to choose. These are the most colorful, beautiful boa that you can get 
period, uh, in their natural color that isn't like a designer morph, for example, or a naturally occurring morph, whatever. I think that these are just stunning. And their disposition is great too. If you tame them out as a baby, which doesn't take a tremendous amount of work, then you can have a pretty resilient animal in terms of handling. A pretty tolerant animal is probably a better way to say it. The sticking point is I want an adult because babies take, babies are kind of like puppy dogs in that you need daily maintenance several times a day, sometimes. And I know people fight me in the comments section. Well, my brother's father's son's dog had one and it was fine and we went on vacation for six months and there was a flood and we came back. Okay, okay, whatever. The What I'm trying to say here is the maintenance for babies, their humidity needs to be like jacked up like 90-ish percent. If their water bowl goes dry for 12 hours, you might come back to a dead snake. It's just, there's so much that could go wrong with babies. Not trying to demonize them. If you want to get one in your desk, dedicated, a-okay. I'm just saying that in comparison, adults are much more resilient. Obviously, still have the maintenance where you need to make sure it's humid, make sure that their water bowl is always full. If they knock it over, you can't go two or three days before you, oh, I didn't notice. So I just think that the maintenance is a little bit more. And I think you're going to see a common theme here where my bread and butter is things like leopard geckos, ball pythons, boas, uh, dumbbells boas even, Euromastics. Like there's certain animals that if I leave on vacation and I leave notes for someone to check on my reptiles, I barely talk to them about Diamond. Go in there and feed him three times or twice or no times and he'll be fine for a week as long as he's got a shallow water bowl. So these animals, the Brazilian rainbow boas, they just take a little bit more time and effort, but they are big. They're big. I mean, not huge, obviously, but they're big enough that, in my opinion, they're a perfect size. If there's something that's five feet and a little bit big around, it's not fragile. So I can handle this thing. I don't have to worry about maybe hurting it or maybe if it, you know, it falls a little bit or whatever. How does something fall a little bit? Why can I not explain anything properly during this episode? I'm just saying that they're not fragile like some other snakes might be, but they're not intimidating and they're not dangerous. If one bites you, you're not going to get stitches. If it wraps you up, they're not gonna be able to constrict you to the point where you can't pull them away. So they're safe, but impressive, and they're beautiful in the coloration, and I like snakes that can fit into something like a four by two by two enclosure to match the rest of my enclosures. It looks good in my room and the snake looks good in the enclosure. And I like interacting with snakes that are of this size. So it's a personal thing. This whole list is kind of like personal bias, but the entire thing is I wanna know in the comment section what your bucket list is. So I think I said that at the beginning, but I mean, type it out. I wanna know. I always find it so fascinating what people like and why they like it. So anyway, let's move on. Number two, and it wouldn't be a WWR video unless I ruined it with an amphibian, dart frogs. I love poison dart frogs. I almost never call them poison dart frogs, even though that's what they're called, because they're not poisonous in captivity. They actually get their poison, what would kill you if you ingest it, uh, from the insects that they eat in the wild. And in captivity, you feed them things like flightless fruit flies. So I'm not saying eat your frog. Don't eat your dart frog. You might get sick actually, but not from the poison because they're not gonna be poisonous in your home unless they're wild caught and you eat it the next day. This is like a really roundabout way to say they're not poisonous. Dart frogs are tiny. They're little and you can cohab them. I would recommend obviously get one species and cohab that species together. Don't go mixing and matching, but there's a bunch of different ones. If you want blue ones or green ones or my favorite are these bumblebee type yellow and black ones. I just think they are eye catching and at the end of the day, if you're gonna get something like a colorful uh, animal, like a dart frog, you're getting it as a display. You're not picking it up and holding it. It's not sitting on your shoulder, nothing like that. You're gonna have it in a display and you can make the enclosure almost like living art. That's something that I love to do. I started doing more of these. Here's a little teaser, one, two, three, it's gone. It's on Patreon if you actually wanna see it. And then when's this video come out? So I guess at the time of this recording next week, but for you, last week I went to Snake Discovery. I went down to Minnesota and made an enclosure for a species that I haven't decided yet, but maybe it's gonna be for dart frogs. I just like building living art. And for me, for my personal bucket list, the reason I want these is because I'm fascinated in the species. I think they're amazing. My favorite movie of all time, Apocalyptico. There's that cool scene where, anyway. And uh, well, I like enclosures that are like art. In my home, I have a big turtle tank, which to me is art because there's fish in there and turtles and I'm beating this to death. I like plants, I like animals. You can put them together and make it look beautiful. Dart frogs are awesome and just the only reason I haven't got them is uh, I don't actually have a reason. 
You'll see them soon on this channel. Okay, number one bucket list reptile, something I must have, and if there was one reptile that I could get, it would be this one, rhinoceros iguanas or Cuban rock iguanas, anything in that cyclora family, I don't care. I just think that they're amazing. I always say rhino iguana just because they have that nosy thingy mabobber on their nose and they are a little bit bigger. I'm pretty sure rhinoceros iguanas are the largest in the cyclora family. I should know, I put them in a video like two weeks ago. Regardless, three, four, sometimes up to five feet these guys are gonna get and they're puppy dog tame a lot of the time, especially if you raise them up from babies now, the reason I don't have one, I'll just jump the gun here. I live in Canada and there's none to be found and you can't bring them into the country. So whatever's here is here and there's like next to none here. So I'm never gonna own one here, but I mean, you guys know, I'm trying to talk into existence my move to the States. So eventually I think that this is something that you can keep outside if you live in a place like Texas or Florida or somewhere like that where it's, nice outside for most of the year, as long as you have a backup inside your home. I just don't think that these are great for most people because most people live in a place where you need them to be inside all the time. You don't have weather nice enough to have them outside. And I think the best way to keep them is a camp cannon type situation where you can keep them outside in under natural UVB, under natural heat, natural humidity, that sort of a thing. Now, of course, this is a personal opinion. This whole video is a personal opinion. I'm not an expert on these. I just researched them to death for fun. Uh, people watch Netflix and like they run out of season. I run out of care sheets to read about these guys or people to talk to about them. And that's what gets me upset. I'm waiting for the next season of Cyclura to come out on some breeder. Please contact me and talk to me about Cyclura. And that's it. I think this is probably a little bit of a shorter one. I hope you enjoyed it. What do you think? Please, I know I asked twice already. Let me know in the comments section what your top five I must own them bucket list reptiles are. And tell me why, I love to know. I love talking to reptile keepers. That's my favorite thing about this channel. And if you wanna be part of that, well, Discord is free. Get on Discord, we talk to each other all the time about reptiles and other stuff. If you wanna support the channel, Patreon, as little as a dollar a month, you know about these builds that I've done. You're gonna get a sneak peek at the snake discovery thing that I just did last week. You're gonna get, well, you know about Kratos and his new enclosure. How cool is that freaking thing? It's huge! For as little as a dollar a month, you get all that and more. And a, uh, a special thank you to just all of you who hit like and subscribe. Helps the channel a ton, and because I do videos twice a week, that means I see you on Monday.